Qualifying for the Miami Grand Prix is over and Sergio Perez is on pole position in a crazy and hectic qualifying session. But the question is, what did we learn from an insane qualifying session? Well, other than my predictions for qualifying, we're so far off the mark, it's not even funny. Well, we're going to have a look at the data from qualifying, see what we learned that could be useful for today's Grand Prix. And we're also going to take a look into the data to see what happened and why it actually happened. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get into the video. Qualifying was absolutely crazy and the grid is completely mixed up, meaning that we have a great race in store here today. But I will be talking about the Mercedes, Red Bull, Aston Martin and Ferrari a little bit later on, so stick around for that. Right now though, we're going to be talking about what we saw in the midfield. The midfield could do with a video all to itself, because the midfield was wild and today's grid could not be any more shaken up. The biggest winners in the midfield were surely the Alpine team and the hats driver of Kevin Magnussen, whereas McLaren are probably the biggest losers. For Alpine and Kevin Magnussen, this was a dream session. Alpine, in terms of the championship fight, are in the best possible place with Pierre Gasly in P5 and Esteban Ocon in P8. With Alpine looking strong over a race distance and fairly fast in a straight line, they could be in a great position to take some points off of their main rivals, McLaren. Because for McLaren, Miami was a complete disaster in terms of qualifying, with Lando Norris down in P16 and Piastri P19. But why are they so slow? Well, let's take a look at Norris's fastest lap of a 128.394 and compare that with the Q1 lap time of Esteban Ocon, which was a 127.872, to see where McLaren lost out in Q1. What does the data from this lap actually show us? Well, what it shows us is that I did get one thing right from my practice analysis video, and that was McLaren get incredible traction on the exit of corners, which makes them very fast in a straight line, at the opening phases at least. And they're also faster in the corners, however McLaren is significantly slower in a straight line. At some points they are as much as 8 or 9 kilometers per hour slower in a straight line than Alpine. Not only that, but as you can see, McLaren are earlier on the brakes as well. This might be to try and get a better exit, but they are giving up some free lap time by braking a little bit too early. For McLaren, this is going to be a very difficult Miami Grand Prix, because with a slower car in a straight line, overtaking and getting through the field will not be an easy task. They may need to pray for some chaos up ahead. For Alpine though, they just need to keep things calm and clean. Gasly should have better race pace than the Haas in front of him, and Ocon just needs to maintain his position after Max Verstappen inevitably overtakes him and then work his way up to the Haas of Kevin Magnussen. Speaking of Kevin Magnussen, let's now take a look at Haas, because once again, in a completely shaken up grid, we have Haas starting much further up the field than they probably have any right being. We saw it in Brazil last year when K-Mag was able to take the brilliant pole position, and yesterday, Kevin Magnussen was able to put the Haas up in fourth place. This is a brilliant opportunity for the Haas team to score some good points at one of their home races. Let's now take a look at the lap time of Kevin Magnussen and Pierre Gasly to see why Kevin Magnussen is in P4. As you can see, the lap time between these two is so similar that it comes down to small changes between the two drivers. Haas is showing a slightly faster in a straight line, but it is not a noticeable difference. Instead though, it is in the tight and twisty section towards the end of the lap that you can see that Kevin Magnussen is able to carry a lot more speed over the chicanes, and essentially this is where Magnussen wins out. For K-Mag, this could be a race of going backwards a little bit, as Haas are not typically very strong in race trim, at least versus qualifying trim. They are, however, very fast in a straight line, and could therefore use that to defend from other midfield teams. The fight between Haas and Alpine could be very interesting, provided that tyre wear is not excessively high. But I don't think they will be able to hold off both of the Alpines, Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc and George Russell. Speaking of Verstappen, Leclerc and Russell, let's now take a look at the Mercedes, 
Ferrari, Red Bull and Aston Martin and talk about what was frankly a wild qualifying session for all four teams as none of the top four teams have both drivers in their correct position. For Aston Martin, Fernando Alonso may be in P2 but Lance Stroll went out in Q1 and is starting in P18. For Mercedes, George Russell is in P6 but teammate Lewis Hamilton went out in Q2 and is starting P13. For Ferrari, Carlos Sainz is starting P3, but his teammate Charles Leclerc is P7. And for Red Bull, Sergio Perez is on pole position, but Verstappen is way down in P9. For the Mercedes team, Saturday was, in general, a massive struggle. They seemingly went backwards after a strong Friday as Lewis Hamilton went out in Q2 on pure pace. His teammate George Russell was also on the bubble of being eliminated in Q1, and then Russell almost found himself eliminated in Q2 as well. He was on the bubble in both sessions, and had Q3 gone on as normal, then it would have been very possible that Russell would have been in P8 or P9 on the grid today. The question is though, where are they struggling? Well, to find out, let's take a look and compare the Q2 lap of Esteban Ocon in the Alpine, and compare that to the Q2 lap of Lewis Hamilton. And what can we see? Well, what we can see is that in the tight and twisty sections, the Mercedes was struggling a lot, especially over the kerbs, even against the Alpine of Ocon. It was noticeable during qualifying that Mercedes was not able to handle the kerbs very well. This was an issue that plagued the team back in 2022, and it seems to be an issue once again. A reason for this could be due to the stiffness that the Mercedes runs at. They may be pretty stiff, which then leads to them struggling over the kerbs when they are as tight and as twisty as they are in Miami. Russell was able to run over the kerbs a little bit better than his teammate. However, there is no doubt that this weekend, Mercedes are battling the Alpine team for fourth fastest team overall. Mercedes usually go a little bit better in race trim, and this weekend they will be praying that the race is a little bit better than qualifying for them. For Aston Martin, they had the ultimate tale of two halves. Fernando Alonso once again delivered with a brilliant P2 on the grid for today's race, but for his teammate Lance Stroll, it was a disastrous session with a P18 and being knocked out in Q1. But where did Lance lose all his time? Well, to find out, we're going to compare both the Q1 laps of Fernando Alonso to Lance Stroll to see where Stroll was a little bit slower. Well, we can see that Alonso is much faster just about everywhere. But not only is he faster just about everywhere, he's also much faster through the tight and twisty chicanes at the back end of the circuit, but he's also able to carry a lot more speed through the first section of twisty corners at the start of the lap as well. And he uses that speed to then launch down the straights. He opts to break a little bit earlier than Stroll at some times, but he uses that to then get a better exit and ultimately, he was much faster than Stroll. For Alonso, this is the perfect position, and once again in Saudi Arabia, Alonso may lead the Grand Prix after the first lap, but I cannot see him being able to hold off the might of the Red Bulls. However, I do believe there is a spot on the podium that has been made just a little bit easier for the two-time F1 world champion. For Ferrari, it is another tale of Charles Leclerc throwing away a golden opportunity. Q3 for Leclerc was a session that was filled with mistakes. And to show that, let's take a look at the fastest lap of both Leclerc and Carlos Sainz from Q3, because Leclerc was set to beat his teammate by over two tenths of a second, which would have been good enough for second on the grid. Looking at the laps between the two with the Delta, Leclerc gets better exits onto each of the straights, and this is where he makes up the majority of the time. Actually going through the twisty sections, it is his teammate Carlos Sainz who is a little bit quicker, but it seems like Sainz actually loses a lot of time just before going onto the long back straight, and at this point, Leclerc is up by over two tenths, but then going into the final hairpin, you can just see how slowly Leclerc has to go as he locks up and runs deep into the hairpin, throwing away all of the time. In the Grand Prix, Leclerc has now made his race much more difficult than it otherwise needed to be. He has thrown away a potential second place on the grid, 
and instead now has to fight his way through the field. For his teammate Carlos Sainz, however, a spot on the podium has opened up if he can beat his fellow Spaniard, Fernando Alonso. Finally, we come to Red Bull, and yet again it is a tale of two halves. For Sergio Perez, this was the best possible result, as he has claimed pole position by nailing his lap first time around in qualifying three. But for his teammate, Max Verstappen, Verstappen made some critical errors on the first lap, maybe by getting caught out by the wind. This would, in the end, be his undoing, however, as he was unable to go back out and set a lap time due to the red flag from the Leclerc incident. This has certainly handed the ascendancy to Perez going into the Miami Grand Prix. The question is, though, will Perez be able to hold on to the advantage that he has? So with that in mind, what is my prediction for the top five in today's race? In P5, it will be Pierre Gasly in the Alpine. P4 will be Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari, P3 will be Fernando Alonso, P2 will be Max Verstappen, and I am sticking with my original prediction of Sergio Perez to win the Miami Grand Prix. What will actually happen though? Well, we'll just have to wait and find out. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.